The Battle of Sudden Flame, the Dagor Bragolak, and the Ending of the Siege of Angband. Fingolfin, the High King of the Noldor, planned an assault upon Angband after noticing the strength of his forces. Both elves and men had formed great armies and seemed capable of ending the Siege of Angband for an offensive assault against the Dark Lord Morgoth himself. Morgoth, however, was not idle. He made new creatures of evil in his minds and terrors unheard of to the Noldor. The Noldor did not realize this. Many of the Noldor enjoyed the kingdoms they had made and did not listen to Fingolfin's charge, especially the sons of Feanor. It was 455 years since Fingolfin entered Beleriand, and Morgoth did not only wish to destroy his foes, but to devastate the lands they ruled. Morgoth turned out to be the more impatient one, where if he waited longer, he would have surely had a fuller victory. There was a great winter, and when the night was dark and clouded, the wide plain of Ardgallon was quiet. The fortresses of the Noldor were silent, and the watchfires burned low. Morgoth then sent great rivers of flame that poured all over the plain, and the mountains of iron put forth poisonous fumes. The grasses were burned, and Ardgallon was destroyed. Smoke and fire entered the heights of Dorthonion and the Arid Wethrian. This began the Dagor Bragalak, the Battle of Sudden Flame. One of the greatest terrors of the First Age was revealed to the world that night. Glaurung the Golden, father of the dragon. With him were Balrogs and armies of orcs greater than anyone had seen or imagined. The Noldor, the Grey Elves, and men were all defeated and were pushed back. The Siege of Angband was ended and the Free Peoples were laid bare to Morgoth's assault. The Grey Elves fled to Doriath and abandoned the Northern War, and Fingal strengthened his borders. Others went to the sea, and in Nargothrond, and some hid in Osiriant. Men especially grew afraid. The sons of Finarfin bore the most hurt from this battle. Angrod and Aignor, his sons, were slain. Bregolas, the lord of the House of Beor, which was the first of the three kindreds of the Edain, died. Barahir, the brother of Bregolas, was in the west, near Sirion. King Finrod Felagund was cut off from his people there, and would have been slain until Barahir and his men made a wall of shields around the king and saved his life. Felagund swore an oath of abiding friendship and aid in every need to Barahir and all his kin, and in token of his vow he gave to Barahir his ring. Barahir became lord of the House of Beor that day and returned to Dorthonion. The ring of Barahir would be passed down from Numenorians to Gondorians and the kingdom of Arnor, as a token of the kings, although the ring had no power in itself. Fingolfin and Fingon, his son, were cut off from Finarfin and his sons. At Ithel Sirion, Hador, of the third kindred of men, was defeated, with Gundor, his younger son. Galdor took the lordship of his father. Kelegorm and Kurufim, the sons of Feanor, had been defeated and fled near Doriath and stayed with Finrod Felagund. In the east, the fortress of Mithros at Himring was not taken, and stood strong against the onslaught of the orcs. Glaurung and the orcs came down from the north and destroyed the land of Caranthir and defiled Lake Helavorn and Mount Rerir. East Beleriand was devastated apart from the fortress of Mithros that stood watch over the enemies to come. When hearing news of what befell Beleriand, High King Fingolfin was taken by a madness of rage. He went alone to Angband's gates and sounded his horn to challenge Morgoth to single combat, and Morgoth came. That was the last time in those wars that he passed the doors of his stronghold, and it is said that he took not the challenge willingly, for though his might was greatest of all things of the world, alone of the Valar he knew fear. This was in reference to the power that was poured forth from Morgoth's spirit in the creation of his evil creatures. Morgoth was weakened by this. He did not deny this challenge, for he would have been seen as a coward among his captains. Fingolfin named Morgoth Craven and the Lord of Slaves. Therefore Morgoth came, climbing slowly from his subterranean throne, and the rumor of his feet was like thunder underground, and he issued forth clad in black armor, and he stood before the king like a tower, iron crowned, and his vast shield sable unblazoned, cast a shadow over him like a storm cloud. But Fingolfin gleamed beneath it as a star, for his mail was overlaid with silver, and his blue shield was set with crystals and he drew his sword Ringil that glittered like ice. Morgoth drew his great hammer Grand, which Sauron named the wolf's head that broke the gates of Minas Tirith in his honor, and Morgoth swung Grand like a bolt of thunder. Grand made great pits as Fingolfin dodged the blows, and flame belched forth from these pits. 
Fingolfin wounded Morgoth seven times, and seven times Morgoth gave a cry of anguish. Fingolfin could not hope to compete against the mightiest of all the Valar, however weakened he may be, and Morgoth pressed his shield upon the weary king. Fingolfin was pushed down to his knees, and Morgoth put his foot upon his neck. Fingolfin struck Morgoth's foot with Ringil, and black blood rushed forth and filled the pits of Grand. There was ended Fingolfin, the High King of the Noldor, and the greatest of the Elven Kings of old. Thorondor brought news of these events to Gondolin, the hidden kingdom of Turgon, the son of Fingolfin. And Morgoth broke the body of Fingolfin, and was about to cast it to the wolves, when Thorondor, the King of the Eagles, marred his face, and he took Fingolfin and placed him within the hidden city of Gondolin. Morgoth stumbled on his one foot ever after, and the pain of his wounds were never healed. His face bore the scar that Thorondor gave him ever after. Fingon, the brother of Turgon and the son of Fingolfin, in sorrow, took the lordship of the house of Fingolfin and the kingdom of the Noldor. His young son, Arenion, who was after named Gilgalad, he sent to the Havens in fear that no heir of the Noldor would remain. The fall of Fingolfin is one of the most tragic events of the First Age. The hope that was established previously is shattered, the curse of Mandos has begun to unravel, and this is the beginning of the end. The ruin of Valerion set the stage for future tragedies to take place before the ending of the First Age. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Lord of the Rings content. Also, Lord of the Rings Online, uh, Minecraft, and Elder Scrolls Gaming. So if you're into gaming or, uh, you know, lore videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to see when I upload. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.